So we're just continuing on. And like I said before, it is a repetitive pattern, which is helpful. <laughs> um, there's no steps to worry about just yet. When we work up to our second level, there will be an extra step in there, but I'll show you that when we get there. And once we get to the next color, oh yeah. Okay, so you just gotta make sure if you do need to take a break, you're allowed to take a break whenever. You just put your work to the side and make sure you know where you are. But with this first level, it's pretty easy because you're just counting. Just to make sure that you have the proper number of beads. So I've been working with uh, within the Southeast Regional Library System actually for five years now. I am the librarian here in the Lampman branch. So to be asked to do this presentation was actually quite a privilege for me. And some of you will know me from um, Weyburn Culture Days. This year, of course, we had to go vo virtual with that as well. Um, so I did have a video uh, for the Southeast Newcomers Services where I did a Dreamcatcher tutorial. So some of you might already know me <laughs> from those videos. And hopefully when everything goes back to normal, we'll be able to do in-person classes again. Uh, I was so I was scheduled to do a Dreamcatcher class for the uh, Lampman Family Center, where I am the Aboriginal coordinator um, for programs there. Uh, of course, with the pandemic, we don't do in-person programs, so that one will have to wait. Um, and eventually, I will be able to do a beading workshop with them as well. And uh, because I have so many supplies, I probably will be for our own branch making um, making up some kits for kids uh, for the Aboriginal Storytelling Month because this is more teen and adult um, focused for these take and take and make kits, which helps out a lot actually. Um, I do like working with children. I try to teach them um, as much as I can in the simplest terms that I can. Uh, I love their questions, actually. <laughs> and we just try to pass on as much knowledge as possible because they are learning so much more in school these days than we ever did at our age. Um, that I believe the vision of reconciliation will be within that generation. All right, so we're gonna count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we got three more to go. So at this point in time, I like to actually put them aside so that I don't lose my spot. And once we get there, then we will trade our colors. And then we're actually gonna pause for a second because I'm gonna show you the most important part of this, and that's moving from one level to the next. Um, with these particular earrings, we're only doing two levels uh, because just for time and supply-wise, it's the easiest, but they actually still look really, really good. So it's a good thing. All right, so remember, uh, put it between your fingers, pull as slow as possible, and marry it up there. Don't worry about it. You see how that one's kind of turning? Don't worry about that, because when I go back with, uh, with this thing, it'll straighten it out. But if you find Actually, you don't have a needle. <laughs> Just make sure you're pulling tight at the end of your threading it through your bead. And there's our last one. We'll get it on there. So lots of people don't realize 
that um, there are significances in everything that we do as Indigenous people. I'm learning this as I go, but the hoop itself is actually has many lessons with it. Um, of course, everything that has a circle, there is a reason for it. There's a start and an end. Uh, it signifies the sun and the moon, the life cycles. All right, so we're here. Now we're going to move to our next color, which is yellow. And we're going to try to get one that is the closest size to the white as possible. Because for that first level, you want everything as close to the same size as possible so that when you move to your second level, everything is flat and even. And I'll show you that, all right. So I think once you see this one come up, then we're gonna maybe skip ahead, <laughs> we'll see. There we go. Okay, so like I said, I flip it over, I wrap it around my finger, and I go back where I see, start seeing some slack, and I just pull up slightly. Go between those two beads. Now these, um, these threads that I'm pulling on, uh, they are called the bridges. Remember that this is called the brick stitch that I'm teaching you? So these are called thread bridges, and those are important for when we move to the next level. 